Good evening, good people. It's good that you're here. I thank you for joining us for this time of worship tonight at Friends Congregational Church. It's our holy week, and it is Maundy Thursday when we remember the last night that Jesus would spend with his friends. This is a special occasion for us on a personal level as well, because we haven't been able to gather in this space for Maundy Thursday since 2019. This is a chance that we have to be friends with each other in this space and not exclusively online. But still, whether we're in this house or online, we are together in spirit. And we thank you for those of you who have joined us for this service tonight online. And on that note, if you haven't taken the opportunity yet to download the worship guide for this evening's service, you can do that in the, uh, based on the comments section of our Facebook post, our YouTube post, or on our website. But tonight, as we remember, I invite you to simply be, to be present, to be in this space, whether in this house or online, be present, knowing that you are not alone and knowing that the greatest gift that we can share in this night of remembrance, this last night, is a friendship, a friendship that will never let us go. Welcome to worship and remember that as we depart tonight, we do so in silence, holding vigil until Easter morning. And if you need to remain in this space when the service concludes to meditate, to pray, take as long as you need. Welcome. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship that you will find in your worship guide for tonight's service. Spirit of Christ, be with us now. Guide us in the hour of trouble. Awaken us when we sleep. Help us face the cross upon which you died for our sakes. Help us to face the crosses we must carry. We seek to be your disciples following you in fear and fainting as you strengthen us. Lead us through life and into death, for we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in you. Amen. 
You may be seated. Everlasting God, who was and is and is to come, we are grateful that you have invited us here as guests to a banquet as witnesses to your holy love. Inspire our singing, our praying, our proclamation, so that your spirit may come alive in us once again. Let our worship this evening bring the stories and passions of Scripture to new life for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. 
It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in pr proportion to the number of people who eat, eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. First Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26. I received a tradition from the Lord, which I also handed on to you. On the night on which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. He did the same thing with the cup after they had eaten saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do this to remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you broadcast the death of the Lord until he comes. You are invited now to join at the table. And before we share in this meal, may you know that in this space and at this table, all are welcome. No matter who you are or where you come from or what you have done, you are welcome here in this space. And in a moment, you will be invited to come forward to receive the bread and the cup. There will be a gluten-free option should you need it, and we have both wine and juice. The wine is red and the juice is white. We ask that once you receive your elements that you return to your seat so that we can all partake together once everyone has been served and so that we can share with those who are joining us online. And for those of you who are joining virtually, you may use this time to gather whatever elements you would like to use. And friends, if you would now join me in the invitation to the table, which you will find in the worship guide. This is the table where everyone is fed. This is the table where nothing is broken but bread. This is the table where only seeds fall down. This is the table where cups are filled with reconciliation. This is the table where we remember. We remember that upper room, friends gathered around a table, a table where a place is set for each of us. And here in that space, amid the hum of conversation, the passing of plates and the brief respite from what was to come, Jesus, our friend and teacher and brother, looked into the faces of those who he loved. And sitting there in that space, 
he took the bread from the table and he felt the weight of it in his hands like the weight of his own life. And in giving thanks for it, he broke it and he passed it to his friends saying, this is my body broken for you, my life given to you completely. Take and be filled, and as often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And there, in the presence of those who would betray him and deny him, he also took the cup. He poured the wine out for them to drink. And he passed it to them, saying, this is the cup of grace, a covenant of God's love. And there is nothing that you could possibly do to be unworthy of it. And as often as you share in these gifts, may you do so in remembrance of me so that the world may know God's love through the love that you have for each other. Shall we pray? Good and gentle spirit, meet us here in this place as we share in gratitude for this story, for the precious life of Jesus, whose example reminds us that in belonging to you, we belong to each other and are responsible for one another. Bless these gifts of bread and cups so that they may nourish our souls and guide us to extend the love that this meal represents to all who we may encounter. Amen. The communion stewards, please come forward. Friends, this table is set. Come not because you must, but because you may.
Friends, together, let us take and eat. And together, let us drink. Shall we pray? Holy One, this is the table where we remember, where all are fed, the betrayer and the betrayed, those who seek justice and those who hinder it, the gracious and the arrogant, this would not be God's table if any among us were not welcome to partake. Let this story be the promise that we keep to one another to fulfill the wholeness of that covenant. We pray in the name of your Son, who made something out of nothing and who taught us to pray together in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, hear this reading that comes from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes, picking up a linen towel. He tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, You will never wash my feet. <laughs> Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus responded, Those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. 
When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself, and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for a little while longer. You will look for me. But just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. Before we share in this gift of washing each other's feet, washing each other's hands, I had a simple thought I wanted to share with you. I was talking with my parents today, and they were sharing with me about how their church is doing a service like this, but in each other's homes, they're going to be doing foot washing in each other's homes. And I thought, that sounded really cool. And mom said, Yes, but your father is not going to let anybody wash his feet or his hands. And I said, well, you know, Dad, that's what it takes to be a disciple. You have to be willing to let somebody wash your feet. We were just kidding around. But I held on to that. Because the thing is, it can feel really good to love other people. It can feel really rewarding to serve other people. And tonight, it might feel very rewarding to love others and serve others by washing their feet or washing their hands. Even if it is a little out of the ordinary, it'll still feel good. But having my feet washed, having my hands washed, it's not just about loving and serving others. It's about being willing to be loved. Being willing to be served. So the question for us tonight is, Are we willing? There is power in love and service. And there is power in vulnerability. So I invite you, I invite us, to let our guard down and love one another as we love ourselves, serve one another as we serve ourselves. And we'll do that by washing each other's feet or washing each other's hands. This is literally traditional to the story. But in our time of not walking from point A to point B for miles barefoot, we work with our hands and need for them to be held and washed and cleaned as well. And so whatever you feel more called to, be it having your feet washed or your hands washed, I invite you to go to either station. And just as the Scripture invited us to do, we are going to do that for each other. So in a moment, Brooke is going to be at this baptismal font to wash someone's hands, I'll be at this font here to wash someone's feet. And whoever would come first, we will do that. And then that person who has had their feet washed will take a seat where I was and proceed to wash the next person's feet. And likewise, after Brooke washes someone's hands, they'll take her place and wash the next person's hands until all of us have been cleaned as Jesus has invited us to do with and for each other. So come as you feel called, and let's be friends with each other.
Spirit, as we sing together. Please be seated. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same.
they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, praying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of, the, all of them deserted him and fled. <clears throat> 